Last October, President Volodymyr Zelensky said that Ukraine would strike Russia's Black Sea Fleet wherever it will be stationed, implying that it could also include occupied parts of Georgia, where Russia has kept a garrison and is rumored to be constructing a naval base. We will reach them everywhere, the president said back then. The remarks sent waves across Georgia, raising fears that the war could soon touch Georgia, which has gone a long way to distance itself from Ukraine and its fight, according to Kyiv independent media outlet. Since then, Russia only sped up the construction of the base, which has the potential to drag the small South Caucasian country into a wider conflict. As Russia's Black Sea Fleet, which has traditionally been stationed in occupied Crimea, has been hammered by Ukrainian attacks and largely forced to withdraw, Russia has sought a safe harbor further from Ukrainian drones and missiles. Ochamchiri, located over 700 kilometers southeast of the closest Ukrainian-controlled territory, has the potential to offer Moscow a new naval base largely out of reach from much of Ukraine's current long-range capabilities. Details about the Ochamchiri base, located in Abkhazia and occupied by Russia and its proxy forces since the 1990s, have been scant. Much of the analysis about the port has stemmed from satellite imagery and often contradictory statements from Abkhaz officials. Nonetheless, the project, if completed to its full potential, could have significant implications for Ukraine, Russia and Georgia. Talks on the creation of a Russian naval base in Abkhazia date back long before the start of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Modern-day Abkhazia is internationally recognized as Georgian territory but has been under the rule of Abkhaz and Russian proxy officials since the 1990s. The first Russian warships reportedly were deployed to Ochamchiri in 2009, shortly after the 2008 Russian invasion of Georgia and the subsequent cementing of the occupation of Abkhazia and South Ossetia. Russia officially claims that Abkhazia is an independent country currently recognized by four other states, Venezuela, Nicaragua, Syria and Nauru. The occupied region shares a land border with Russia and is fully dependent politically and economically on Moscow. The plans to move part of Russia's Black Sea Fleet to Abkhazia gathered steam in the fall of 2023. Zelensky's claim that there is now no safe base and no completely reliable logistical route in Crimea and on the occupied parts of the Black Sea and Azov coast was viewed by some in Georgia that Ukrainian missiles and naval drones could soon be hitting Russian ships moored in sovereign, yet occupied, Georgian territory. The possibility only added fuel to the rhetoric from the governing Russian-friendly Georgian Dream Party, members of which have regularly claimed that the West is trying to push Georgia into the war. Ukraine's surprise offensive into Russian territory is perhaps the most daring adventure in more than two years of war 
former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, said, CBS News reports, this is a big psychological blow to Russian thinking, in particular to Putin, because for the first time since World War II, Ukrainians have penetrated Russian territory, he noted. At the same time, Milley noted that the territory of almost 1,300 square kilometers is only a dot on the map of the Russian Federation. So with three open flanks, it could be risky. The Russians can concentrate their forces, cut them off and defeat the Ukrainians, the expert warned. When asked whether he expected Russian leader Vladimir Putin to launch a major counter-offensive to retake his territory, Milley replied, that's at least one possibility that could well happen in the coming months. Milley believes that President Volodymyr Zelensky, with the operation in the Kursk region, is betting that the defensive lines in Ukraine will hold while he opens a new front on Russian territory. He took a calculated risk to put himself in a strong position for what he thought would be the start of some negotiations, perhaps next year. The military officer explained, in particular, the general is referring to the risk of whether the US will continue to provide Ukraine with sufficient weapons to combat Russian aggression. If somehow that aid is cut off, if Europe or the United States does not support Ukraine, then I think it will be very problematic for Ukraine to continue its fight. Milley warned, Earlier, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky stressed that the Ukrainian Armed Forces operation in the Kursk region had already shown some results. According to him, it slowed down the Russian Federation and forced them to transfer some of their forces to Kursk. Our fighters in the East are already saying that they are being hit less often. I am not saying that this is a resounding success or that it will lead to the end of the war or the end of Putin. This has shown our partners what we are capable of. The head of state noted, in turn, Igor Shaltis, a serviceman of the Nachtigal Battalion, spoke about the reaction of the Russians to the invasion of the Ukrainian armed forces in the Kursk region. According to him, the Russian army actually resisted, but the civilian population showed no desire to actively resist.